Hello, uh, this is Dongxu. Uh, today, Nick and I will give, give a brief introduction of TypeKV, which is a cloud native key value database. Uh, you know, TypeKV is a CNCF project, and now it is an incubating level project, but um, TypeKV uh, right now is on the graduation process, so maybe uh, next month, uh, TypeKV will become the the graduated project. Okay, uh, this is me, and I'm the, the co-founder and CTO of PinCap. PinCap is the company behind TiDB and the TiKV. Um, it is a database company. And uh, I am a database geek. I use a lot of databases. And I also uh, work as a distributed system engineer for like 10 years. Um, Okay, we, we, we use Rust and Golang a lot. Um, you know, TyKV is built by, um, you know, built in Rust. And the TyDB, which is the SQL layer of, on top of TyKV, it is uh, using Golang. So this is my Twitter and this is my email. If you have any following questions, just feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm Nick Cameron. I'll be giving the second part of this talk. Uh, I'm a senior engineer at PinCap, where I work mostly on TyKV. I'm also a member of the Rust core team. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Nick underscore R underscore Cameron, or GitHub and many other places on the internet as NRC. Okay, um, today's talk will be divided into two parts. Uh, first, I will give a brief background of uh, background inf introduction of uh, TyKV project and share some stories and a little bit of history of this project to explain why we are doing this. Uh, in the second half, Nick will share some technical details, benchmarks, uh, uh, and the roadmap of, of TyKV. Okay. Um, a little bit of history. You know, I just mentioned that PinCap is the company behind TyDB and TyKV. Uh, before I founded PinCap, uh, I, I was in the big internet company in China. And at the time, I was in charge of uh, our internal MySQL cluster. Um, you know, at the time, our business was growing so fast. And, and the amount of data was getting bigger and bigger, of course. Um, so my job is, you know, to reshard uh, our MySQL all the time um, to, you know, scale out the, the, the cluster. But believe me, it is not funny at all. At the time, I, I still remember I read the, the spam, Spanner paper around the beginning of 2015. Uh, that paper described an implementation of a distributed transactional uh, database, uh, which is widely used inside Google. And also, uh, I read another paper called Google F1, which was the SQL layer on top of uh, Spanner. At that time, Spanner is more like a NoSQL database. So this paper said Spanner plus F1 replaced their MySQL cluster behind Google Ads. And so we, we were so excited about that. So we, uh, we decided, uh, my, my colleague and I decided to start a startup to, to do the open source implementation of, of Spanner plus F1 and with the MySQL protocol. And it should be compatible with MySQL. Uh, you know, at that time, we don't have such database in open source community. Um, here is a screenshot of those two important papers that I think, uh, you know, that, that these two papers describe the beginning of, uh, you know, so-called cloud database. Okay, um, you know, this is a very ambitious uh, project for a small startup. At that time, we just have three engineers, including us. And um, so we should should be focused on something, right? Uh, we choose to start with the SQL layer, uh, which is the F1 part. Uh, the reason is that we think that um, the SQL layer is uh, closer to the application layer, closer to the to the developers, 
um, and it's a better, you know, uh, it better expresses our ideas in the early days. And more importantly, uh, I said, I just mentioned that ThaiDB speaks MySQL protocol. We decided to speak MySQL protocol. So for the quality, uh, quality purpose, we want to reuse the test cases from MySQL and MySQL community. For example, we can borrow some test cases from WordPress because WordPress is using MySQL as its storage engine. So in the test case of uh, WordPress, it should be some, you know, a SQL, uh, some test case related to, to, to the MySQL. So we can reuse this, these test cases to test our SQL layer. And then we, uh, after a few months, we open source the first version of TiDB's uh, SQL layer. It is true that many people in the community were really, really interested in, in our project, but they soon discovered a very serious problem. Uh, you know, we claim ourselves as a, you know, TiDB is a distributed database, but in 2016, we only have a SQL layer. So that means we, we don't actually store any data because we don't have a storage engine, right? Uh, as you can see, uh, F1 is on the left and we are on the right. The Even though F1 is just a SQL layer, but the data is stored inside Google Spanner, right? But at the time, we don't have our own Spanner. So in order to make TiDB more like a database. We, we decided to use HBase as our storage engine at that time. Uh, however, we, we know that HBase doesn't support the cross-row cross transactions or, you know, ACID transaction, ACID semantic, right? But uh, Spanner can. So we implemented the two-phase commit on HBase using its uh, coprocessor mechanism. Uh, it is provided by, by HBase. So this is us in 2016, and that makes TiDB, you know, look like a distributed database, making sense, right? But there's another problem, which is very, very serious, but uh, it's really hard to solve. Um, it is the performance problem. You know, even for a single write request, it has to go from the MySQL client to TiDB's SQL layer, uh, SQL parser, SQL optimizer, and uh, goes through the the the, the HBase coprocessor to run the two phrase commit protocol, and the requests go to the HBase HBase part to the region master, and then the data re is written to uh to the HDFS data node, uh, and the performance is really really bad, and to be honest. Uh, you know, maintain the Hadoop stack is really painful. It is, uh, I think it is even, you know, more painful than maintaining the MySQL cluster. So, uh, by the end of 2016, we uh, decided to build our own spanner. Uh, we want to build our own distributed key value layer for TiDB. Um, so, this is some design requirements or design goals for this such project uh, at the very beginning. First, uh, this key value database, key value layer should scale out, uh, should have the scalability, right? It should be scaled out like other NoSQL systems like you know, HBase, like Sanja. Um, second, uh, the performance is, you know, performance matter, matters. Uh, yeah, I will not explain more about this. It's very straightforward, right? Uh, third, uh, it should have a building cross-row transaction support, right? Uh, because you know this, this spanner have the 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 the, the, the transaction. Uh, it is the biggest selling point of that system, right? Uh, and and next, uh, it is you know. 2000 and it was 2016 
we have some modern data replication protocols like Raft, like Paxos, like multi Paxos. Um, so we decide to use some you know, modern data replication protocol like uh, uh, just like Raft. Uh, okay. And uh, the last but not the least, uh, we want this system uh, have less dependencies compared to the, the, the HBase or the Hadoop stack. So, and then um, it is it is a little bit related to the performance um, the pers per, uh, performance uh, perspective, and we found that such a system, if we have this is uh, we have uh, built such a system, this system has the potential to be the building block for other dis distributed systems. So, uh, imagine that you are making the, the another uh distributed file system for example if you want to build a new hdfs you may need a you know metadata store right uh, just like hdfs name node uh you want want it to to be you know the the scale uh scalable scale out uh meta meta me, me, metadata store but you may be you know, concerned that the metadata store is becoming the bottleneck. So if there is a scalable and uh, lightweight uh, distributed key value store, which also support the transaction, that will be greatly reduce the complexity of building your, you know, the new HDFS, right? Building such systems. So where Taikei we can say. I think this is the, the purpose why we build this. Okay, um, we choose Rust, uh, not Java, to 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 build TaiKV, and uh, uh, we 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 use RocksDB as the, the 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 local storage engine for the for the need of uh, performance. And uh, we implemented the building two phase commit protocol inside this system, but we also provide uh, the, the the atomic key value API semantic um, for the performance purpose. And uh, we choose to use Raft uh, to for the data replication, and our uh, the the whole system is not. The single raft group. It is a multi raft architecture, just like uh, the Cockroach DB. And uh, this project, um, it is not like SCD. SCD is a single raft group. But TechEV, it is automatically scale out system and it is a multi raft architecture. And thanks to the multi raft architecture, we don't need another distributed file system. Uh, and yeah, it is. Uh, we don't need HDFS for the for the scalability, right? So it took us about one year to finish the first version of TaiKV, and we open source it, and then we donate it to to the CNCF, and uh, here is my tweet uh, at the day we uh, done the the, the TaiKV enter the the sandbox. Okay. Yeah, this is a little bit of history of TaiKV and and the, the, the background. Uh, and next, I will hand over to uh, Nick to give a brief introduction of uh, technical details. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Ed. So I'm going to start by talking about the high-level design of TaiKV. Uh, TaiKV is a distributed transactional key value store. I'm going to spend the next few slides digging into the distributed and the transactional part of that. Um, key value store means that uh, it just stores keys and values. It does not, it's not a relational database. It doesn't offer an SQL type interface. Uh, you could call it a NoSQL database, but typically uh, NoSQL databases don't offer uh, uh, transactions and the consistency properties that TaiKV does. 
So a Thai KV cluster it looks like this. Um, the Thai KV nodes are in the bottom right. You can have as many of them as you like. Uh, three is the usual minimum. To the left, we have the Thai KV client. In this case, we're using TyDB, which is uh, an SQL layer, which can sit on, on top of Thai KV. And on the top right, we have placement driver nodes. And these have two jobs. One is to supply monotonic and unique timestamps to the clients for use in transactions. And the other is to manage the TyKV nodes. Data in TyKV is sharded into contiguous ranges, which we call regions. These regions are replicated across multiple nodes and uh, PD can manage these regions, so regions can be merged or split or moved uh, uh, so that traffic to each node can, uh, can be kept roughly similar. P if, uh, if a node goes down, IKV can recover by regenerating the lost data from the other replicas in each region and putting that data onto other nodes. So I've described so far uh, what a TyKV cluster looks like. Uh, next, let's have a look at the what uh, TyKV uh, internal implementation looks like. So it has a, a very strongly layered architecture. The bottom of the of the stack we have uh, a low-level local key value store uh, for which we use RocksDB, and this is the way that we um, persist uh, data to, to disk. On top of that, we have the raft layer where we uh, have an implementation of the raft consensus protocol. And this layer uh, presents an abstraction over the, um, the, the three replicas of, of any piece of data so that it looks like we're just dealing with a single node from, from above this layer. Now, the, the top of the stack, we've got our transaction implementation, which is a multi-version concurrency control system. Uh, and on top of that, the, the transactions API, which is how uh, the server and the client communicate. Off to the right, we've got um, the, the, the coprocessor, which is not really, uh, doesn't really fit into that layered architecture so much, uh, but is a piece of software which uh, takes uh, intermediate representation of some uh, probably SQL of a query fragment and executes that close to the data itself for the sake of uh, performance. So TyKV is transactional. Uh, in terms of the, the ACID breakdown, all our transactions are atomic and durable, and we offer the snapshot isolation uh, consistency property. Uh, snapshot isolation means that uh, you will never read uncommitted data and you will never lose a committed update. And if you read the same key uh, multiple times in the same transaction, you'll always get back the same value. Taika V transactions are also linearizable. In terms of implementation, our transactions are a, a two-phase commit protocol and that's based on the percolator algorithm from Google. And as I said before, we implement that internally using a multi-version concurrency control scheme, which means that rather than saving a single value for each key, we save a history of values for each key. And so when you, uh, when, uh, a tran when you run a transaction, it sees a snapshot of the data, a consistent snapshot of the data at a particular uh, point in, in the history of each key. That's a, a very brief introduction to the design of, of TyKV. 
and I just want to talk about um, a, a few of the, 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 the properties that are important to TyKV. So the, uh, the database is usually a really fundamental piece of, the, of, um, of software. And so, you know, you really cannot afford to have the kind of errors in a database that would lead to you losing data. So reliability of type AV is extremely important. So we run uh, regression and performance tests. Uh, these range from uh, tiny unit tests up to long running multi-day uh, tests, which are as run with real world data and is as close to a real world situation as, as we can simulate. If you're familiar with the Jepson organization, they, uh, they test databases and other distributed systems for various consistency uh, claims. And uh, we run a, a range of the open source Jepson tools on our own infrastructure uh, to ensure that we uh, deliver on the, the uh, the the promise transaction promises that we we have made. We uh, we do chaos engineering style testing using a tool called Chaos Mesh, which has just been accepted into the CNCF sandbox, which is uh, uh, great, and uh, that allows us to to simulate nodes going down or network links slowing down or disappearing and so forth. And finally, we uh, model all the, the key algorithms we use in TLA plus to get as close as we can to a formal proof of correctness for those algorithms. So as well as reliability, everyone looks for performance in a, in a database. So uh, I just want to present some benchmarking that we did at the, the end of last year. We used uh, YCSB. Uh, benchmark suite, and we compared TidyB with uh, Spanner from Google. And uh, we performed the benchmark in the cloud, and the way that uh, Google offered Spanner means that we, we can't use exactly the same hardware, so instead we um, paid pretty much the same amount of money for, for the two setups. And here are some uh, charts of the, the results of that benchmarking. Uh, the top row is throughput, where bigger is better. The bottom row is latency, where uh, smaller is better. And Spanner is in blue on the left, and TidyB is on, in green on the right. So uh, just at a glance, you can see that um, TidyB has uniformly better throughput than, than Spanner, uh, significantly so in most cases. In terms of latency, uh, reads in TidyB are better, but writes are a, uh, a bit worse. And uh, we've got some work going on at the moment to the transaction system, uh, which hopefully will be in version 5, which should make our, uh, our writes much faster than they are today. Version 4 of TyKV was released in June this year, and we're planning to release version 5 early in 2021. There's a bunch of really exciting things planned, uh, so I want to go over a few of those in the... Uh, I mentioned earlier in the talk how we use RocksDB as a local key value store. So one of the things we're working on is allowing you to bring your own key value store and use whichever one you like, so you can choose the performance, characteristics, and other properties that, that you want. Another major change, I, I talked about uh, transactions in TyKV. Uh, that's uh, an API between the server and client. There's another API which lets you just deal with raw bytes with a simple get set kind of interface rather than the, the, the transactional API. And we're adding a third API, which gives you manual control over the multi-version concurrency. We're looking to improve stability, especially under very large-scale workloads. Uh, we're looking, we're implementing latency-based flow control. We're implementing auto-scaling, and we're looking to uh, smooth out some of the latency jitter that 
uh, you can observe with with some workloads at the moment. Uh, we're also looking always to improve performance, and for version five, we're particularly looking at uh, more uh, constrained environments to operate in, uh, rather than the traditional super high powered database server. Uh, so we're looking at optimizations using uh, slower hard disks, starting with uh, SATA SSDs. We're looking at operating using less memory, and we're also implementing joint consensus in, in Raft, which should improve performance, especially for uh, geo-replicated clusters. In this final section, I want to talk about TyKV's community, because uh, TyKV is an open source project, and it just wouldn't be where it is today without its community. Our uh, core repository has over 100 contributors, uh, and that community is active and growing, using TyKV, filing bug reports, and writing code. As part of that work to grow the community, we've recently formed some special interest groups around uh, the, the, the key components that I talked about earlier. Uh, the engine group works on the, the low-level single-node storage, such as using RocksDB, and the Raft transactions and coprocessor groups work in their respective areas. These are not just groups for developers, but for anybody who's interested in the, the kind of things I've been talking about. So uh, if that's you, please come and join us. We develop on GitHub and we chat on Slack in the TyKV WG, which you can find by following either the QR code or the URL on this page. I'm NRC in both places, so please come say hi and let me know if there's anything I can do to help you get involved. All right, uh, that's all we've got for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it and the online format. Uh, we're looking forward to answering your questions live when this talk is broadcast later this month. Cheers.